So Jiffy is the world's most popular Jiff website and it serves 10 billion media content every single day. And we can totally guess it would be using some kind of CDN to do that. But is that it? In this video, we dive deep into how Jiffy uses different features of CDN to solve different kinds of problems. And while going through it, we will also take a look at a very interesting internal implementation detail of a CDN. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Crick Buzz's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So, if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat, arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I have also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I am looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So Jiffy, you can host, serve and search GIFs. It serves 10 billion media content every single day. And if you think about it, serving API is a relatively easier job. Why? Because when you are serving an API, given a request, you send a JSON response. These JSON responses are, are tiny. Hardly 1 KB, at max 2 KB, 3 KB it would go in, right? So serving API, scaling it, it's relatively easier because you can guarantee millisecond level of response times from your backend servers. But the real challenge comes in for a company like Jiffy is while they serve images like GIFs and videos, the media content that they have. Why? Because API responses are not short when you are serving images. Images could be 512 KB big or 1 MB or 2 MB or 5 MB big, right? Same goes with videos, right? So given that, that is where the real challenge lies. And obviously you can think of it that GP would be using to serve images and videos some kind of CDN. So GP uses Fastly as their CDN provider. So what happens is they may be, maybe we don't know their architecture, they may be storing their GIFs and videos on S3. They would be using some kind of CDN. Here they use Fastly that we know of. So request for those images go to CDN while the API responses go there, go to their classic API servers. Right. So this is how a typical CDN is set up. Now, what does GP cache on CDN? So we typically know what can be cached, static resources, static resources like images, videos, JS bundles and whatnot. But on apart from that, what GP also uses CDN for is to cache API responses. And you'll say, hey, API responses. Yes, CDN can also cache API responses. So the idea here is while you serve APIs, right? So instead of giving you, uh, basically instead of giving the uh, domain name of your API server, you give domain name of CDN and on CDN configure origin or something else. This way you can serve API responses from CDN. But obviously you should not do or you should not serve every single API from that. For example, authentication API because CDN has a cache in itself. Like basically CDN is a cache in itself. So you would not want to cache 
uh, API responses of APIs that are dynamic in nature, right? For example, authentication API, you should not be serving it from the CDN. But what you can definitely serve is search and discover API responses because they very rarely change. Like for a particular search query, you would very rarely change the responses. Like maybe once a day some ranking job runs and that's when you change. Or maybe you're trending. Trending may, you may very easily cache your API responses for trending for let's say three hours or five hours until your next job runs, right? So this is what Jiffy does. Jiffy uses CDN to cache images, videos, and some APIs around search and discovery, right? Okay. Next, then why, why CDN? CDN is not just to cache things, but what it also does, it gives you geographical nearness. For example, in for a company like Jiffy, where they have users all across the globe, what if their main data or their main images lie in let's say India and a user from the US is trying to access it. Then all across the world, the request needs to come across and then the response would be created here and then sent back. So this would take a lot of time. Why? Because the response size is higher. Images, videos, they tend to be chunkier. Like they, they tend to be larger in size, which is what is the problem. That is where to give the best experience to the user, you use CDN, like Jiffy uses CDN to use geographical nearness because CDN has edge servers and these are called edge servers. They are distributed all across the world. So people from the US, their request will go to the nearest edge server. If it has the data, it serves it. If it does not have the data, it comes to the origin, gets the data, caches it, and then serves it. So CDN is a classic, classic, classic cache. So every single server, just to reiterate, every single server is, uh, every single server of CDN is called an edge server. People making requests, the request is automatically routed to the nearest edge server. If edge server has the data, good enough it would serve it back. If it does not have the data, it goes through the origin. It could be S3, it could be API server, it could be anything. It goes to the origin, gets the data, caches it here, and then sends the response to the user, right? Now here, one very interesting detail, very, very, very interesting internal detail that comes our way is, hey, if what could happen if there is a content that is going viral, now, obviously, for a particular region, there is not just one edge server. There could be hundreds and thousands of edge servers for each region, right? So, given that, given that as a use case, given that you may have thousands of edge servers, and now each edge server would have its own cache. So, in the world, a lot of edge servers are distributed. Each region have hundreds and thousands of edge servers. Each edge server has an independent cache independent cache so it now it's not that all edge servers are sharing a cache or they're sharing a storage so every edge server has its own cache so now what would happen if a content goes viral viral only from a particular region if i think of if a content is going viral from a particular region a lot of requests will be originating from that particular region it would go to edge server it's not just single edge server of that region there are hundreds of edge servers now obviously because it's a each edge server has an independent cache the for that the content going viral there would be a lot of cache misses given that there would be a lot of cache misses where would the request go to it would go to the origin maybe your s3 maybe your search service maybe your backend api service wherever right and then it would put unnecessary load on your origin server so if your content is going viral from a particular region, if that region has, let's say, 5,000 edge servers, so request from all 5,000 edge servers, because there is a cache miss, it would go to origin. So origin has to handle a large number of requests. So is that, this, is that the best architecture? Because then it is unnecessarily putting load on the origin. Although subsequent requests would be faster, but it is putting unnecessary load on your origin. Can you reduce it? This is where what CDN employs. Is CDN employs something called as an origin sheet. It's not a single layer cache, it's multi-layer cache. It's something that CDN does it, we don't have to configure it. So what do you have? Edge servers are something which acts as the point of interface from your client. So user's request come to the edge server. Request from the edge server, if it has the data, it serves it back. If it does not have the data, instead of edge server directly talking to origin, edge server makes a request to a shield server. This is an origin shield server. Now origin shield server, are the ones that make call to origin to get the data and they have their own cache, right? So now what happens is request from the edge server comes to the shield server. 
Now, if shield server has the data, it sends it back. If it does not have the data, it goes to origin and gets the data. Now, shield server are not many. Shield servers are only few. They are few as compared to edge servers. This way, let's say if I have four edge servers and two shield servers, the number of requests going to origin will not be four for each edge server, but it will be two for each shield server. This way, CDN helps you prevent or helps in preventing making a large number of requests on the origin, be it S3, be it your API server. Such a brilliant way to design a system. I loved when I first went through it, right? Such a brilliant way. Okay, what else? Which other feature does Jiffy use? The next feature that Jiffy use of CDN is a route specific TTL. Obviously, when you are setting or when you are using CDN as a cache, or CDN is a cache. So when you are configuring it, you would want to specify that, hey, please cache the response of this for n minutes. But now, should n be constant? Should n be same for every single resource that you have? No. It has to be very specific to the resource, which is where almost every single CDN provider gives you a way to specify the cache duration for each URL pattern. So for example, for an API response like slash v1 slash gif slash trending, you might want to have a smaller duration while when you're serving the actual gif, let's say slash gif slash 12345.gif, that would have a longer duration, right? Which are the feature? The next feature that Jiffy uses is around response configured cache. Now, obviously you may not want to just do route based cache duration. It may be something that your backend is generating that, hey, cache this thing for five minutes, cache this thing for 20 minutes. So which is where what you can alternatively do is in the response coming from the origin, be it S3, be it your API server, you can configure a max age or S hyphen max age header, which your CDN can read and understand and then cache that particular response for those many seconds, right? So this is where response oriented caching also comes our way. Then the next one, this is very interesting. Now, for example, around invalidation, this is all about invalidation. So what if you have an API that you cached on the CDN and now you want to invalidate it, but it's not just that single. So single API invalidation is a very simple thing. So, and you can just ask your CDN making an API call that, hey, this is the URL, please invalidate the cache. It would invalidate the cache right away. That is a pointed invalidation. But the next few are very interesting. Let's say you want to invalidate the API response, the cached API responses on the CDN that contains a specific GIF. What if you want to do that? So let's say there was a GIF that you that got changed due to anything or that got removed, not just changed, that got deleted, right? So if that got deleted, imagine if your API server, or sorry, imagine if that API response is cached on the CDN, right? And the GIF was deleted. So which means that URL doesn't exist anymore. Now what would happen? Request from the user, request from the client come in. Because CDN has the API response, it would serve it. In the API response, it would be serving the URL of an image that does not exist. So the UI would look bad. Which is where if you, in case and GIF is deleted, you should also be invalidating the cache. But it's not just the GIF URL you need to delete. The AP, because API responses are cached on the CDN, you would want to invalidate the API responses that contains that specific GIF. How do you do that? There is something called a surrogate keys. It's like tagging, it's like in simple terms, it's like tagging a cache key with something that you would want to access it and delete it with, right? So those are called surrogate keys. Highly, you're just a Google search away to find those things out, right? So invalidating cached API responses containing a specific GIF very common use case then invalidating all cache api responses from an api key so now here what it is so jiffy as a company it's not just a b2c company it's a b2b company as well so here you can make or you can generate your own api keys and use and integrate jiffy in your applications so what if a client a customer of jiffy wants to invalidate its own cache like anything that it has ever access it wants to invalidate it Right, very common use case. Again, it uses surrogate keys to do that. Then the next one is invalidating cached API responses when the query contains a particular word. Let's say you built a search query or or, or you are basically caching search queries, uh, sorry, search API responses on CDN, my bad. Uh, if you are doing that and let's say you would want to uh, invalidate all the URLs or all the API responses that contains a particular word or that particular search term, if you'd want to invalidate that. Again, a very common use case, typically when it comes to search ranking, right? When let's say you re-ranked everything, you want to invalidate it. 
right? So if you would want to do that, how can you do it efficiently? Which is where again surrogate keys come in. So in case, think about surrogate keys as tagging. When you are caching something, you can pass in extra tags. The extra tags could be GIF IDs. It could be search queries. It could be something else. You can leverage that, that specific tags to eradicate or to invalidate the cache entities on the CDN. Which is what something that is really important for a use case like GP. Right? So yeah, such, such amazing pieces of uh, functionalities that CDN provides. I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to go through CDN documentation like Akamai, Fastly, Cloudflare and see the kind of features that they provide you. They, they, while explaining in their documentation, they also specify a few very practical use cases. So I would again highly, 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 highly encourage you to explore those and see the beautiful world of CDN and see the kind of things that they provide. Right? So yeah, that is it. That is it from this one. This entire thing was taken from Jiffy's engineering blog. I've linked it in the description down below. Again, I would highly recommend you to check those things out for most more detail. But more importantly, go through CDN documentation to understand the features that CDN gives you out of the box. Just their documentation is good enough for you to understand the features that they offer. Right. So yeah, that is it for this one. I hope you like this video. If you like, like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton. Thank you.